ITB in Scotland, in partnership with SBATC, develop skills tests on behalf of the construction industry. It's the final part of your apprenticeship and you need to pass this to become a qualified craftsperson and achieve your SVQ. Passing your skills test should not be too difficult. It's a way of proving that you're capable of doing your job and if you are, you should be able to pass the test. So here's what you need to know. You will sit your skills test within the last six months of your apprenticeship. There are test centres throughout the country, maybe even in your college, and both you and your employer will get plenty notice of where and when your test will take place. At college, you're assessed all the time on what you've learned and the skills test is just another assessment of your knowledge and hand skills. The only difference is that this test has been designed by CITB, SBATC and employers. The test has various elements and all are things you have been trained and tested on before in your phase tests and other assessments in college. Skills tests are based on skills required to perform the sorts of tasks commonly used on sites. This proves to employers that you can work competently to commercially acceptable standards and at a reasonable speed. If you don't pass your skills test, you will struggle to find another job as a qualified craftsperson or even get onto a site. It's really important that you do as much as you can to prepare for your test. You should download the Test Candidate Guide from the CITB website to familiarise yourself with the content of the test. You also need to make sure you carefully read the joining instructions you've been sent. You should speak to your employer as soon as possible if you feel you need any refresher training so that on the day you are confident and have the ability to pass. Make sure you know where your test centre is and how long it will take to get there. If you don't live near a test centre, don't worry, CITB and your employer will help you sort this out. On the day of your test, timekeeping is really important. If you are late, you won't be allowed to start the test. You'll be asked to prove who you are at the test centre, so you'll need to take photo ID with you. You also need to take your tools to the test. You'll get a list of what's needed from CITB. Don't forget to bring and wear the right personal protective equipment. If you don't, you'll be refused permission to sit the test. Before you start, you'll get a detailed induction and you'll be given a test booklet containing a description of the test. It's important that you read the information for each task before starting. Each task has a description, drawing and a list of the standards and tolerances that must be met in order to pass each element. What it doesn't tell you is how to plan the work, so you have to arrange your own work programme. Only after you have read these notes and feel confident in what you have planned should you attempt the task. On the day, you will be allocated a test area and a stock of materials you need. If you are unclear on any aspect of the test, please ask the invigilator for advice. That's what they're there for. For your wood machining skills test, you have eight hours over one day to complete the test and you must attempt all tasks in the test booklet within the allocated time. You will be instructed on the sequence and the time allocated for each element before taking your test. Once you've finished and left the test centre, your test is marked by an independent assessor appointed by SBATC. They will use a marking schedule which contains the same standards and tolerances as in the test booklet. The assessor will mark your test against that schedule, stating whether each item is within the tolerance or not. All tests and test areas are standard, so they will be the same wherever you sit in. Safety during the test is extremely important and you will be assessed on the safety section of each element before you start any machines. Always make sure that all components, including guards, are correctly fitted and checked before use. Grind and sharpen a pair of cutters and straight knives. Given the cutter blank supplied, grind and sharpen a pair of cutters for a circular moulding cutter block. You will be asked to set up the straight knife grinder for flat grinding and grind, balance and hone knives. As well as having to meet the specified tolerances, you will also be marked on quality. Vertical Spindle Moulder Using the vertical spindle moulder, you have to machine the components safely using the drawings provided. You have to correctly fit the chamfer cutters into the circular moulding cutter block. 
you also have to fit the block correctly on the spindle and select the correct spindle speed for the circular molding cutter block, preset block for beveled rebate, preset block for rebate, adjustable groover. All guards and false fences should be correctly fitted and all tools removed from the machine for each operation. Your machine components will then be assessed against the tolerances in the test booklet. You'll also be marked on quality. The assessor will check that it is evenly machined with no sunk ends or chipping. Single end tenoner. For this element of the test, you're asked to mark out the components from the rod supplied and machine the components, then fit in the trial mortise. The tenon should easily push fit into the mortise with the shoulders flush and no gaps exceeding 0.5 millimeters. The tenon shoulders should also be free from breakout and excessive burning. Circular hand-fed ripsaw. It's important to wear the PPE provided during the test. Using the cutting list and timber provided, you'll be asked to rip and shape the timber to different lengths and widths to the specified dimensions and sections provided on drawings. Always use the push stick when cutting. You can see here that the guard and knife are fitted correctly. The assessor will check that the surfaces are clean and evenly sawn. They will also check that the flatting, deeping, bevel and wedge taper dimensions are within the specified tolerances. Given the required timber, you are to machine one component using the jig supplied. Safety is critical using this machine and you will be assessed again on safety before starting the machine. The finished internal and external component will have to meet the specified tolerances and be free from excessive burn marks and breakout. After the assessor has marked your test, the schedule is then sent electronically to CITB. CITB then check that your marks are within the pass limit agreed by the industry, and if they are, you pass. You and your employer will then receive a letter confirming this in the coming week. If you fail your skills test, your letter will explain in what areas you need further supervised experience on site, and possibly further refresher training in college. An application form to arrange a resit will be sent out, but you can also download it from the CITB website. However, it's important that before booking a resit, you think about the areas you've filled in and why. If you think you need more experience or training, speak to your employer or apprenticeship officer to arrange this. If you have only failed in one particular element and passed the rest, in some occupations, you may get the opportunity to take a partial resit this involves only resitting that section. Once you have passed your skills test, you still have to complete the time served element of your apprenticeship to be a fully qualified tradesperson. Your SBATC registration form shows the date in which you will complete your apprenticeship. By this time, you should have achieved your professional development award, core skills, and all other units of your SVQ. This combined with passing your skills test means you would then receive final certification for your SVQ Level 3 and Modern Apprenticeship. You'll be fully qualified to work on a site in any country in the world, help you get any future employment, or even start your own business. Finally, good luck when it's time to take your skills test. If you need any further information on skills testing, please look at our website, citb.co.uk.